Go on air and be holy and all that. Go and be holy. Da, 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 da. You ain't bought into the vision. You say, how could you say that? Because you don't tithe. See, giver is a current thing. You gave. You're not a giver. And you think you did God a favor. You were just doing what you were supposed to do. So if you're not tithing, you're not doing what you're supposed to do. So how could you walk around and be spiritual? You, it's literal and spiritual that God told me your church is confused. Literally, you're supposed to do it. And the result of that is a release of spirituality that God gives us. So a lot of us are gifts. That's why the gifts ain't flowing in the church. The gifts ain't flowing because the gifts you're supposed to give to God for your tithe and your offering aren't flowing. Your bank account is stagnant. You're giving up everything in the world but God. And you love him. The vision means you pay the price. There is a price to pay that we all have to pay. It separates the men from the boys. How can you lead but not be a giver? How could you lead your household? Maybe your household is going to seem like all hell is breaking loose because you don't understand in Malachi, he said, you have opportunities to give. He said, I will open up the windows of heaven and I will rebuke the devourer. The reason your house is falling apart is because you don't give. You miss your opportunities to give. You say, well, I showed up for church. That ain't nothing. We just gave you a chair. <laughs> and the devourer is killing you. It's going to kill the vision. That's why it's so important today we got to go out and evangelize, man. Jesus said, Peter, go out there. Because Peter said, how am I going to get into the temple and pay a tithe? How am I going to take care of making sure the temple stays up? Jesus said, go out there and look for a fish. He said, what? He said, yeah, if you're a fisherman, go out there and look for a fish. And it says when he got there, he got to a fish that had a coin in his mouth. And that paid his temple tax for the year. See, there's people out there. That they taking up a chair right now. Their life is just, they're going through all hell. And when they get touched by God and they get saved, they come in and say, you know what? When I got saved, my purse and my wallet got saved too. So many of us get baptized. I'm going to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Pastor, he's going to take two the river and dip us. Well, as soon as you, you know, leave your wallet in your pocket and your purse with you when you go. Because we get baptized like this. Woo! Lord, touch me. And then you put your wallet back in. Everything got baptized except you and your money. See, you can serve. You can serve either money or you can serve God. He said there's the spirit of mammon. Now, there's many great givers in here. There's, you know, I don't want to mention his name because I don't want to embarrass him. There's a man that, that, that shows up. He's done a lot. He's done work that has beautified our church. But one thing I noticed about him, and my wife noticed, he is a consistent giver. He may not have, like, you know, okay, I'm ready to go all out, pastor. But he's a consistent giver. He's bought into it. He's bought into it. We do got people in here that are consistent givers and they bought into it. But I'm trying to reach the ones that have not bought into it. The ones that say, you know what, I have a thought and now I, I, I think I caught, but, but I haven't bought. There's a few women in here, they ain't even got regular income. And they talk about that and give offerings bigger than most people that have been here since we started. Because they understand what God has done in their life. They know I cannot afford not to give. Amen. The next, the fourth one is it has to be sought. Say sought. sought. You say, come on, Pastor, you're using the $50 words now. <laughs> sought. Sought means you got to get after it. It means you got to get off your blessed assurance. God ain't going to just drop things in your lap. So many of us say, I want to see my family seen. I want to see God do a great work. And God says, yeah, well, when you get off your behind, then I'm able to do something. They need to see you doing something. When you seek something or when something's sought, you don't procrastinate. You know one of the biggest devils that we face besides pride is the demon of pro uh, procrastination. So we don't want any procrastination or hesitation. And matter of fact, I'm not always going to give you an explanation. We get so offended so quick because we are, we're, we're not focused. We let the world around us determine how we respond. Some of us don't even respect God's authority. And that's a whole other message, man. It has to be sought. It has to be a thought that is caught, that is bought, and then it's sought. I have all kinds of people that say they went to acquire the fire. 
And some of those people I saw on Facebook talking about last night, they was at a party. I was excited to go to a party, and they're not here today. See, Facebook tell on you. They went to acquire the fire. But what happened, they should have desired the fire. See, acquire the fire deals with the, the head. I understand why they're on fire. Desire deals with the heart. A lot of people are in hell because they had good intentions, the head. But a lot of us, God has given us great favor and grace because of our desire, the heart. People miss heaven by 18 inches, which is the distance between their head and their heart. So don't acquire the fire, desire the fire. Because if you just want to acquire the fire without desiring the fire, you'll just sit around and watch everybody else and admire the fire. So I'm not moved by people that because they go to events, yet their life eventually still falls apart. Thought, 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 thought. Finally, it has to be taught. Some of you should be teaching. By now, some of you should be teaching. But you got to get your own spiritual. You got to get your spiritual house in order. You got to get things in order, man. Nobody's going to buy into your commitment until they see you committed. Nobody's going to buy into loyalty until they see your loyalty. Nobody's going to give until they realize that you're a giver. And you don't have to tell people that. God lets it emanate from us. The same way we turn on these lights and the lights emanate, uh, or the bulbs give light. Uh, the, the things that we do, when we're committed, it shows. When we're loyal, it shows. When we're a giver, it shows. God lets the anointing glow upon us. It has to be taught. In other words, we got to model it, and then we have to be focused to teach others. We should always be reaching out to other people, challenging them and discipling them in the vision. Who have you reached out to here in the church? Because there's some people here that haven't been to a journey group or anything like that. But have you reached out to them? Do you have them? Why do I always have to text everybody on a Wednesday or a Thursday to, 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 to get hold of people to follow up for Friday? Or do it on a Saturday for you to get hold of somebody on a Sunday? Why do I have to do it? Why isn't it in your heart? Because you got so much drama going on in your life. And God is secondary. And the Bible says, first seek the kingdom of God, and all of his righteousness and everything else is added unto you. I love some of the new people. They're stepping up, and that's what keeps me motivated. So I'm saying, you know what, God, I'm going to, we're going to get some new folk, man. And you know what happened in the desert? People were released out of Egypt, and then they got halfway out, and God said, I can't let them get the promise. Moses was like, well, I can't get the problem. God just said you took us out. You brought us out to bring us in and all that. He said, they ain't ready for battle. See, you got to fight your way to the promise. And God said they weren't ready for battle. And what he meant was, it's not that they couldn't fight with their hands or with weapons and all that. The problem was, the biggest fight was their love for their past. And the whole first generation that came out with Moses died in the desert because they had no faith. All they did was complain. If you complain, you remain. Yeah, you could Facebook that one. If you complain, you remain. <laughs> right where you're at. Here's a quote. The poorest man is not the man with no money. 